This is Les with Judson Vacuum. I'm here with Jeff Woods. Now you might remember Jeff came down about a year ago with his blue line and uh, at that time we thought it was going to need a computer uh, replaced on it because it would run about five seconds and shut off. But uh, he can't, brought it down with me. It was, it was going to cost him a good bit to get it repaired. And uh, he then you have to, this is Jeff Woods with me here. And Jeff, weren't you having to drive a good way to get it repaired? Well, I'd have to go about uh, 200 miles north of Chicago and have it worked on, and it's the only unit that I had, so I was having reliability issues with it and not uh, having faith that it would get me through the day, so uh, I, had to, I had to do something as far as getting the reliability put back in it, get it repaired, or uh, do something to get it going, so uh, I decided to... Uh, replace this with the TNT and then this was in storage for a while and then uh, we thought that we could do some modifications and put the reliability back in this that uh, that I required for my unit and use this for commercial and and uh, as my main and and uh, have a backup as well so yeah I mean Jeff originally was you know nor normally I mean as, as I said before in the original video when we finally decided to re-engineer this thing uh, we originally tried to sell it as, as is, and Jeff just had too much money in it. And I kept saying, Jeff, you got so much money invested in this thing, I hate to see you sell it for $10,000 and take such a loss. There's, there's not a problem with the quality of this machine or any heat exchange. All heat exchange machines are using the best of everything you can possibly buy. It's just that it's a complex piece of equipment, and if you're not very mechanically inclined and have a few extra parts on hand, or if you live a long ways from your distributor and, it, and you're having to drive 200 miles, you know, just that situation, he was having to drive a good ways to get it repaired. And when it would shut down or have a problem, the issue may not be nothing but a loose wire or a little relay or something, not a major issue, but it shuts the machine off and he's out of business. So uh, I asked Jeff to let me simplify this unit. Now you remember in the other video I showed you all the wires and everything I took off the unit and we converted it to propane because when Jeff, when you finally went high flow, you got your high flow system from Greeny, right? Right. And so from what you told me is you were actually had a, a little giant heater plumbed to the outlet. Supplementing the uh, heat from the blue line. The blue line worked fine with standard six flow and when I went to a higher pressure high flow on 12 flow uh, it just would not keep up with the heat whatsoever, so I supplemented the heat with a uh, the small little giant, and uh, then it had plenty of heat. And uh, then I had some other issues with it as far as the electrical that we had talked about. The unit itself is a very, very powerful unit. Uh, the large blower and its capacity there was no problems with that whatsoever. I really uh, was able to compete with this unit, and uh, but the reliability thing uh, was was really kind of a, a major concern since I was a one-man band with one machine. So, well, like I say, we're not. I mean, that's just the way all heat exchangers are. They're complex pieces of equipment. If nothing, I mean, that's just the way it is to gain the free heat. You, you got to have safety shutdowns and stuff. And I'm like I told you before. If I was going to build a heat exchanger like this, I'd have everything that they have. There's, I'm not, there's no fault in nothing. It's just a complex piece of equipment and has complex problems. But uh, now what I was going to do, I'm gonna, we're gonna, we got it finally installed. We put electric reel, water well with it. It's all installed with a brand new pump out system for its recovery tank, a transfer pump. We've got the heater sitting right here. Just walk up there. It's just tucked back out of the way. we still got room to get in. Uh, I'm going to run it here and I want to show y'all how fast the flame goes on and off. It almost acts like it's got a flow switch. And I'm going to lay the wand down where you can see the wand lever as I pull it and you'll see the flame go on and off. I just want y'all to see exactly how fast uh, the system is when it heats. And we'll do that right now. So I'm just going to... He's getting ready to go back home. And we decided to do this video real fast. I'm going to start it up. And then I just want to show you how fast the heater shuts on and off. Then we'll walk around back and just let you see the installation.
as I was showing you there, I just wanted to show you how fast the, the flame came on from the time I pulled the trigger and when I let it go, how fast it went off. It's almost exactly like it's hooked to a flow switch. That's how, how efficient these new number four little giant heaters really are. Just that little bit of performance increase by the time delay from the release of the trigger, from when we pull the trigger, and it's shutting on and off so instantaneous like that, it's saving a lot of fuel just by that alone. Most heaters have a little bit of a delay in it. So it's amazing that we got that reaction without an electrical flow switch, because we all know flow switches are something you have to replace. It's something that can leave you down. They can hang open or hang shut and not operate. So the reliability of this system is proven. You know, the little giant heater's been around a long time. Judson has uh, hundreds and hundreds of little giant heaters that are uh, over 25 years old still in operation. So there's no doubt in my mind that they're proven and they're indestructible and they're simple and mechanical control. But uh, I just want to show, me and Jeff wanted to show you the uh, install we did. This is in a, a one-ton Chevrolet van extended. Um, just Jack, how about just showing up inside there how much room we still have, even though the heater's in there. Jack's just gonna pan in here and show you uh, how much room we got. We still got the filter box. And you might want to go out and go around the behind in the back. Okay. Alright, come back out. We'll just walk around back and let you look in the back. We put a reel on the door here. Now that's real nice to, it's easy to roll these reels up because you just stand right beside them. And uh, here's the electric reel. You still got a good bit of room here to get inside there. Some shelving will go here on the right side of the reel. It's still opened up real good. Um, I was concerned about the heater cramping it a lot, but it seems to be just fine where it's located. But anyway, um, we just thought we'd make this. Jeff's getting ready to go home, and he's going to put some time on this and give us a progress report as he starts putting time on his, uh, I guess you call it re-engineered Judson or Blue Line unit. We'll get it fired up back in Indiana and uh, put several hours on it, and like uh, Les said, we'll get some uh, information on it and some data. One thing that we, we did uh, find out right away was in cranking this up here about an hour ago uh, we thought there might be a bit of a problem with the heat coming off of the uh, water-cooled Nissan engine with the heat combined on the uh, little giant number four but we found that it's just the opposite it, it seems that the fan on the motor pulls enough air through to flush this heat out even more so than the uh, Judson TNT does, but we're going to find out for sure after we put a few hours on it. But uh, it seemed to be fairly cool, even though the heater was burning. Yeah, it's, there's it's, a lot of convection going, come bring it out the top, and fresh air coming in the bottom. So as far as having to vent out the top of the van, I, I don't think that uh, I don't think so. that we're going to have to mm -hmm. do that. But we'll find out when we put some hours yeah, on it. We're real surprised about how how a little bit of heat was actually built up in the vehicle. The heat exchangers are gone, and so we're just blowing the engine exhaust outside of the vehicle now immediately, so we're not storing any heat energy in heat exchangers or preheaters or anything like that anymore, so that might have something to do with it not being so hot, especially when we shut it off. It's not radiating any heat from the system anymore. Uh, so well, Yeah, and it's, it's probably 95 degrees out here today in uh, uh, North or South Carolina, so yeah, it's, it's hotter here nice. than it is in Indiana. Uh, we'll, we'll keep you updated on it. We made this short video for you before Jeff headed back home. But thanks a lot, and we'll see you later. Thank you.